Hi guys. I think I'm live. I had to rotate your phone message and then it went away. So let me see. Uh, impromptu live. I'm going to finish up the top of this and then show you how I use the dark and decrepit for shading. So let me just find myself here. Hope you guys are all doing well. It's Friday. It's beautiful here. I've been trying to do a lot of shopping the last couple of days. I have an auction to go to tonight. I'm excited. There I am and I look sideways. I may have to, I'm going to try to rotate my phone and if that doesn't work, I'm going, why do I look sideways? Do I, I don't know why I'm coming up sideways. Let's see if I can rotate my phone. Jerry, am I sideways? I'm trying to go landscape. You are sideways. Oh, let's see. Is this gonna change anything or I might have to leave? I might have to leave and come back on. Let's see. Did that fix it? I think it may have fixed it. I don't understand why I can't go landscape. I'm trying to go landscape because if I go in the other direction where it's wider, I have heard that uh, Facebook will, uh, that you'll get better reach because it fills up the screen. Whereas this way you're gonna, if you're on your iPad or whatever, you're gonna get black bars on the two sides. So if anybody knows, Jerry, you do videos. If you know how to fix that, I would love to know how. All right, so I'm finishing this up today. Swipe that off. I'm finishing this up. And for those of you who didn't see the inside, check this out ready here's the ta-da and it's gonna go in the shop like this opened up with all of my stuff all of my transfers and stuff in here sticking out because this is quite deep over here on this side but I figured I need something on the top that's pretty too so I put um, this is one of the old 12 by 12 this is one of the original IODs this is so old this is just the medallion and I put it on here in the middle and I'm going to put a flower over it but you know what I noticed you guys I already knew this but I haven't used one of these old ones in a really long time there is um, there's quite a halo on this around the edges everywhere the new ones have no halo uh, it's just it's really kind of impressive how much how much they've changed um, and I think this is maybe from like the first batch so um, yeah so I'm gonna put something over this to kind of tie in, can you see it? So I put um, partial on the door there. So what I thought I would do, so it's gonna be a little off-centered. So this and that, that's all part of um, leftover um, botanist journal, I believe, from the board that was done. So I think I'm going to put this here and off-center it a little bit. Let's hope it doesn't stick because I don't sure I want the flower right straight in the middle there or if I want to offset it a little bit. What do you think? Offset, I gotta look at it from this side. Um, or centered, and then it would need to be distressed or something to, opinions, can you guys see that enough to like give an opinion? I'm kind of going with the flow as I do it. Let me put the camera down. So this is the flower in the middle. It just happens to fit. I honestly did not plan any of this. I just knew I needed something on the top and then that wasn't enough. So this flower I cut out right in the middle or asymmetrical. Whoops, one of my, one of my wheelies came off the bottom. What do you think? I like it both ways. I kind of like asymmetrical. Do you like it asymmetrical? Hi guys, do you like it like this? Alrighty, I'm gonna go for it. Thank you. I do listen to you guys, see? I think this way, um, yeah, that works for me. All right, let's get this on. You know, the other thing I noticed when I'm putting this, when I was putting this on, is it doesn't release as easily. Where are my scissors? I think I already kind of knew that, but. I still have a lot of the old ones and I love some of the older designs that I still use, but um, they really just do not, 
they just don't they don't do justice there we go these the newer ones are just so much easier and pretty um, I like that there's already some distressing on this so we might be able to see some of the medallion right behind the uh, rose here after we get it on see how easy trying to get some air, so I'm lifting it, and then I'm gonna, there we go. Press this way. So for two days, I've been searching estate sales and shops, looking for some furniture to paint. Usually I have more than enough, and it's a problem that I have too much. I can't find anything, you guys. I'm dying for a dresser or something with a flat front to get a transfer on. And at the auction preview, I did see some stuff for tonight, but it's nice, older stuff that I actually wouldn't paint because it's nice as it is. Part of the issue is that I will only do wood. I'm kind of, I'm very picky actually about the, about the um, quality of what I'm buying. You know, you want to start with a nice solid piece, so I can't find anything. And of course, you know, if you're in the mood to shop and you're looking for stuff, that's when you never find it, at least in my experience. Oop, did that good? A little static cling there. All right, that looks good off-centered. I'm going to make sure it's all down and then, hmm, am I going to just stress it a little bit? I don't know. You know what, I have checked Facebook Marketplace and Facebook Marketplace is really funky. It's like, it, it keeps showing me the same stuff over and over and then it'll say there's new listings, but it's all the same stuff and people want too much. You know, I, you can only pay a certain amount if you're, if you're gonna flip it and if you're gonna paint it. And, you know, everybody thinks that their stuff is, because they've got an emotional attachment, they think that it's, worth more than it really is. You can't sell a marketplace, you know, retail value, the same as somebody who's selling in a shop who's got high overhead. So I make offers and then sometimes people come back after a couple of weeks when they realize they're not gonna get their price. I'm trying everything and tomorrow I have a workshop so I can't hit yard sales. Although I admit I do not get up at like seven to go to yard sales because I like to sleep in. All right, so what do we think of that? Do you think this needs a little bit of distressing or does that work? Now I am gonna be doing the um, dark and decrepit. You never find furniture in Hawaii. How nice just to live in Hawaii. But yeah, that's so frustrating and I won't do particle board. I refuse, yeah, so you're, sounds like you're picky like me. I really just don't, don't do it. Um, so yes, Jerry, so we painted this the other day in DIY paint, uh, what did I use? Petal Pusher, I love the color, and then I wet distressed it, and so now um, I am going, this all needs to be recoated with Big Top. I sealed it first with Big Top, and next I'm putting this on it. Um, I use it over the Big Top instead of using wax, so it'll do some shading. All right, so I guess I don't need to shade the top right now so I can think about this, but let me know what you think about just dressing that. Let's look at it from this side and see what I think, and then I'm gonna do the dark and decrepit. Yeah, I might distress, well, I don't know. I'm very indecisive sometimes, okay, so. I wanna, I'm gonna move the camera down because I'm gonna do the dark and decrepit and I'm gonna do it on the door since it's got a panel. So I gotta figure out how to let you guys, those are my wine glasses for staging, not for drinking. All right, so I want you to be able to see. That works pretty well. Still a little high, but so here we go. We're gonna we're gonna open this up. I just put my hair up, and oh, that looks pretty. I was gonna say I didn't see what it looked like. 
particle swells, it fall, you know what, the particle board, um, usually don't care about my hair, but I I'll, probably ought to fix it. Um, what I have found with the particle board, not only is it, not only is it crazy heavy, like you can't, it's, it's heavier than, than solid wood, um, but you really can't do repairs in it because as soon as you try to put a screw in it, the stuff just, it falls apart and disintegrates. So I, I feel really strongly about just starting with something that is solid. I mean, I wanna put my, if I'm going to be spending all this time and then charging for my time and my artistry, it should be on um, a quality piece that's gonna last and you can't guarantee particle board's gonna last. So I just won't paint that stuff. And that's why I'm having a hard time finding something. It seems like lately there's just either um, total antiques, which I try not to paint if they're real old collector. Like this piece is a, um, this piece is done with nails. It's very old. It's like um, 1800s, but nobody wanted it. So, so now, so it got painted and really it was kind of ugly. It's a sugar, um, it's like a sugar cabinet or something. So um, yeah, most people overpriced for sure, yeah. You have a ton of, I'm glad Jerry that you have a lot of furniture to choose from. Okay, so I am going to, if you guys can see that, and I'll do around the drawer, use the darkened decrepit. So um, I'm gonna use it, I use it kind of like a glaze. I've got my cloth, my um, chalk cloths, which I'm gonna dampen. And this is sealed, so it's not gonna soak right in. And I'm actually just gonna grab from the lid here. You can always add more. I don't wanna make too much of a mess, so that's how I'm gonna do it. All right, sit down on my bottom here. Can you guys? short of putting you like right on the floor with me, which I guess I could do. All right, so I'm gonna go in to these grooves kind of like, this is actually pretty much exactly what I would do with wax. I'm gonna put it in all the way around and then I'm gonna go back and do some blending and manipulating. Do any of you use the dark and decrepit? I use it, it's a great stain. So basically what it is by DIY, it's like the liquid patina. So it's like a, it's like a colored sealer, actually. Um, you could put this all over a piece to distress it. I mean, to um, age it. And then have that be your top coat if you wanted. All right. Blending, so it's yeah, it's sticking in there. It really it looks like wax, except that this is better over my top coat than wax because the wax would have nowhere to absorb to. So basically, I just created some shading, a little bit of grunge in there. All right, I'm going to do some around the drawer now, which hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit better. I'm just going to go around the edge where I already kind of distressed it. And this is the kind of thing that I do, and then I step back and I just keep adding more until I feel like I've got the look I want it want, or take it off if I've got too much. Can you see the shading that it's giving? I'll show a close-up after. There we go. It kind of gives it like a blue-green kind of a, give a little bit more right there, just blend that across. And I could wipe, because I've got my big top on first, I could wipe that. Can you see the, yeah, you can see the difference against this when the drawer is closed. Um, yeah, it, this is great, um, Lisa, on solid wood, on um, bare wood is what I mean. Okay, so down here I've got like some, some seams. I'm looking at the wrong camera, I'm wondering why. Um, I'm gonna go across these seams. 
actually. I'm gonna go right in there. Not that it really matters, but I'm gonna go across the seam right here. Blend it out with my cloth. Just a little bit of shadowing makes, makes a difference. Okay, so I'm gonna end up. Let me just do the other side so I, or actually, you know what? I'm, I'll stick right here. I'm gonna take the drawer out so I can do this lip here. Just fix my. All right. So I'm just gonna get this lip. I guess anywhere that you would see shadowing or maybe see some dirt settle. I mean, not that, not that I want it to look like dirt, but um, it ages it a little bit, which is good because it's an aged piece. And I'm hardly using any. I've just got my cap here. Oh, you've used it as a stain, but not as a glaze. I gotcha. Yeah, this stuff is it's pretty dark, so I'd be careful using it as a glaze. I think you just need to work in small sections to get it up pretty quickly. Um, but, you know, it's perfect for a brown glaze. It's really kind of what it is. All right. All right, I think that's good. I'm just realizing that I put uh, hmm. the back of this looks like it's not put on right, like somebody replaced the top and used the hinges in the wrong spot. Hmm. Looks okay from the front, though. All right, I think I just lost a wheel. I want to do across here so that matches the other side. And then I'm going to do the side on the lip, and then we're going to get the top. And then probably I'll do one more coat over the whole thing with Big Top, because I you always want to um, coat over your transfers. So. So I need to have a sealer over the transfers. So I'll just do the whole thing with one more coat. Oop, and I've got a weird little, it looks like, oop, one of my wheels came off. I don't know why it always does that. Okay. But if I wanted to glaze the whole, wanted to use this as a glaze, now another one's gonna come off, so I gotta stand up and fix this. I could, I could use this all the way across the top. I just don't really want to darken it that much. So I'm happy, I think, with, uh, let's do a little more in the door. Like on the outside of the door. And actually, it kind of looks like I did because there's just discolorations in the paint because I, I didn't, um, I didn't prime first. So I've got a lot of the wood coming through and a little bit of color coming through there, um, which is why I like to add this because there's this weird green tone. There we go. Just want to blend any lines. Oops. And then I'm going to do here, which I actually, you know what, I forgot to distress that. I realized after, so this definitely needs this. That I forgot to distress the door because I didn't take it off. Normally I would get all the edges, but I forgot to take the door off, so I missed that whole edge. I think that um, once you're done, that these details are what makes the difference. When you see the shadowing around it and the extra depth, it just makes a difference on how the whole thing looks and giving a project depth, it just looks more artist more thought out, more interesting. It's one of those things that's interesting even though your eye can't really tell why you like it. I think usually it's because of the shading that you add. It's just something about it that makes it pop a little bit more. Okay, my brush is pretty much dry right now, but it's putting just the right amount on there. All right. Um, I'm going to do around here so that I'm staying consistent. 
you, oh, you, you just used your DIY for the first time. I'm glad that you like it. How did you use it um, watered down? Did you use it to make do something textured? How did you use it? There's so many different ways to use the DIY. Did you do water and drippy? Possibilities are endless. All right. I, I'm just wetting my cloth a little bit more. It's getting dry. Yeah, if you haven't tried the DIY paint and you like um, and you like playing and manipulating, I suggest I suggest you get yourself a little eight ounce uh, little eight ounce jar will last a really long time. Like I've done a small dresser with it, so you don't even need to get the the big. my old knees cracking. Hi Heather. Okay. And where's the wheel that came off? It's in the back. Alright, now we're gonna darken decrepit the top. Let's see if I can do it without us losing that now the front wheels coming off. Alright I'm not gonna put dark and decrepit on this part because it's not sealed yet and also I just want to do it on the edges anyways. Um, there. Okay, so now let me put you back up here. Here, Oops, sorry. There, now you can see. All right, so I'm still just using the lid. So I'm gonna mimic what I did down there put it right in here in this crevice. So if you, um, I start next Friday at eight o'clock on the DIY Paint Network page, going live every other Friday. And we're gonna be doing a lot of layering because that's kind of my jam, that's what I like to do. I like to layer, I like to, um, you know, it's all about the process, the first or second part of your process. Sometimes you're questioning what you're doing, um, but have faith that it'll all come together. And that's kind of, that's kind of what I'm gonna be doing, just layering all sorts of stuff. All right, let's wipe that off. Still using the same cloth, just as long as it's wet. I'm trying to turn it if I can remember. So you used it to paint table legs. You, let's see, I used it to paint table legs. I did have to add a little water. You, well, you do, it, it is kind of thick. I mean, you can, um, you can add a lot of water before your pigmentation goes with this paint, which is why you can do like a whole bureau with an eight ounce can. Um, not brave enough to do drippy. And you got beadboard. Beadboard is white. You gotta mix something with that white, honey. <laughs> Um, you know what, the drippy technique isn't for everybody. Um, I have a hard time selling it. A lot of people don't get it. I think I've talked about this before. Um, but you know what, it's fun to try. And if you're gonna use um, water, your squirt bottle of water for blending, then you know, you, you, get, you can get a little drippy in between that and then see if you like it and then just blend it in. All right, so I've got, some of this is on my cloth, so I'm just wiping it off. So I'm wiping it now on the top edge because I can see that it's got some color left in it. And I might actually go back and now add just a little bit. It's hard to tell because it's um, what it's really doing now because once this gets wet, it's changing it a little bit and it needs to dry. So I can't tell what's changed because it's got a little water on it. And what's changed because I've got the dark and decrepit. But I'm just going to add a little bit of the shading like I have down there. I probably could actually put my whole cloth in here. There we go. That, that I can see. 
and I'm trying to drag it in toward the middle and out of the away from the edges. Can you see that? I'll come in a little, I'll come in close after to show you um, so you can see the subtle shading. It really is subtle and I'm standing right over the top of it here. And I actually, you know what? I'm gonna dip my cloth right inside of that. Actually, I'm gonna get a new cloth to dip and wet it. I know it's hard, you, you, you need to get every color just one little bit at a time. You know what's funny to see is I have been using this paint for a year and a half and there's some colors I haven't even used because there's other colors I love so much I keep using them over and over. Um, but the other thing is you can mix your own colors and so that gives you, obviously, but that gives you a whole other huge palette of, you know, things that you, of options and things that you can do. All right, you know what? I'm liking just the variation that this is giving. It's very little because my cloth is wet. This would be good, like using it as a glaze. Um, I think this way is good, applying it and wiping it as opposed to brushing it because you really don't need much. So if you use it as a glaze, this will help you use even less than brushing and wiping it all off. I like this. I might have to do this on the other, on the front, or maybe on the inside. Let's open up the lid after and just see what, if we should do something in there. All right. So as soon as that dries, that'll get resealed. So that does look different than the than the front. It does have a different look. Um, I think the inside looks fine. I think I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to call that done. What a nice surprise, though, to open up your blanket box and have that in there. All right, so that's how I use the dark and decrepit. So um, I don't know if you guys have any, any questions. So it's basically, like I said, it's a sealer. And you use it. It can be a sealer. And I use it like a glaze or like you would use a dark wax. It can go all over, just in the grooves. Um, these small eight ounce things. I don't know, last me a couple of years probably is because I use wax a lot. So um, depending on what your project is, you know, there's a right product for what it is that you're doing. And this one was the dark and decrepit for my shading because I already used Big Top. And um, if you put a wax for shading over your water-based sealer, it has nowhere to soak in. So this would be the proper, proper thing to use for that. That's why I used it. I like to explain all this because it, um, I, people use all these different products and I'm always like, well, why are they using that instead of wax? Or why are they using the, that acrylic glaze instead of um, a wax glaze or a handmade glaze or whatever? And once you understand like the basic concepts, then you, you'll learn how to be able to, how to uh, mix your product, products and um, you know have everything work together well. So there's that. All right, well, I am so excited. I'm going to an auction tonight. Uh, and I have 20% battery, so I gotta go and charge my phone. Um, I'm hoping I find something awesome. I hope you guys learned something today. I hope you loved this. Um, I'm gonna photograph it tomorrow. Uh, I have a class of bring your own, so there'll be some cool before and after pictures of people learning uh, these techniques with DIY paint. So I'm excited to see what they do. So that's what's going on this weekend. Um, have an awesome weekend, and I'll, um, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks, guys. Hey, all of this is available on my website. I'm a horrible salesperson. I always forget to say that. I have friends who are like, I never know where to buy your stuff. Well, I sell all the stuff that I use. <laughs> I just never mention it. So FYI, serendipity.house is the website. All right, have a great one, guys. Stay safe.